Welcome back. This is the fourth video in our series on getting started with processing. For those of you who are new or just getting started on generative art, and we are using processing in the Python mode. So the code is Python, but the underlying software that we are really using is running Java. In uh, processing is running Java in the background. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, some things uh, called transformations okay how do you take your art and how do you transform it in different way here are two that are uh, very common you may want to rotate something that you've drawn or you can uh, scale things up and down so let's look at five concepts in this video again if you have not watched the other ones please do because each video builds on the previous one the first concept that we look at is a daunting sounding uh, push matrix pop matrix okay so first of all, uh, let's uh, look at what these things mean and how they should be used. They should be used together, right? You always use a push matrix and a pop matrix. They go hand in hand. And here is what they do, right? Push matrix is a way of telling processing that you want to remember the current coordinate system, okay? I'm already in a coordinate system, but I'm planning to change it now. So please remember this place. Please remember where I am because I'm going to come back to it. And to come back to it, we would use pop matrix. Okay, pop matrix says I am done with using whatever new coordinate system that I want to use. Can you please restore the previous one? Again, in common colloquial English, uh, when you say push matrix, you are saying, hey, you know what? I am going to try using a new coordinate system for the next few commands. But please remember this one because I will come back to it, and I will come back to it using a pop matrix. And you can say, you know, I am done using it. So can you please go back to it? One analogy that I like to give uh, people is that it's almost like going into a time machine. Okay, So your current position, you remember where you are. When you get into a time machine, you go, you do whatever you need to do there, either back or forward in time. And then when the time is ready, with a pop matrix, you pop back into the current position. Okay. Again, this will become very clear with a few examples. This looks a lot more confusing than it probably is. I'll show a couple of examples, and things will definitely become clearer. Also, if you open many, many open processing or any processing code that is available to you, you will see people using this. So don't be intimidated by it. Don't get daunted. These are very powerful tools and also very simple tools. And they are meant to make life simpler for us. So be sure to try them and not to shy away from them. Okay? That was push matrix and pop matrix. Next, let's look at uh, translate. We're going to translate. Okay. Again, we are playing with the coordinate system or the graph paper, if you will. In this case, we're going to change the origin. Let's see how to do that and why would we do that. When we say we're going to change the coordinate system first, let's understand what is going on. First, you know that in processing the coordinate uh, origin is 0, 0 at the top left. And in this case, we have come down 20, 20, and we have also drawn a square of length 40 and width 40. Okay, So that you draw. Let us say that you want to draw this exact same square. You want to either move it or draw one more square, but you want to move maybe uh, 60 units, 60 pixels in the x-axis and say 80 units in the y-axis. Okay? One way to do that would be to calculate, uh, you start from 20, 20, so 20 plus 60 would be 80, and you can do that, and then you can calculate where the starting point of the y-axis should be, and then you can calculate everything and completely draw it. Another way to do this, and this is a new way for us, for some of us, the processing way of doing it is to say, you know what, simply I'm going to change my underlying coordinate system itself. So my graph, if I'm going to pull it down, 60, 80, and then I'm going to draw the exact same square that I drew without changing my code, okay? Now, again, this may be confusing. There's an excellent article on this in Khan Academy that I found, so I've given you the link. Uh, do read it. Once you start using these things, it will not be uh, daunting at all. But translate is so useful that I want to uh, go over it. And the most commonly used translate command is translate width by 2, height comma height by 2, half the canvas width and half the height. So let's understand what this uh, means. First of all, before we did any translate, there is a 0, 0, an origin. And let's say that this blue point, right? Its coordinate now is width comma zero. If you see the x value, we've gone all the way to width of the canvas, so that will be width number of pixels comma zero. And if I draw a green point here, 
my x value is not changing at all, it's still 0, but I have come down height, so it will be 0, comma height. Right? This is normal, we have not done any translate. But now let's say that we did translate width, comma 2 and height, comma 2. What will happen? Now, the canvas is still the same, the exact same canvas, but the origin is going to change. It is instead of here, we are going to move all the way to the center of the canvas, width by 2, height by 2. So this is a new world, okay? We have entered a new world. In this coordinate, uh, in this coordinate system, what is my coordinate value x and y for this blue dot? Let's think through that, okay? I have already come width by 2, and I know I have to go to width, so I, my x, I have to travel the distance from here to here, x distance is width by 2. What about the y distance? I have to go up. How, how far up? I have to go height, my, uh, height divided by 2 in the negative or up direction, okay? Remember, y increases as you go down. So to go up, you have to do minus. Therefore, if I did my math right, this coordinate point should be width by 2, comma, minus height by 2. Okay, that's how it is. And now let's, uh, you, I would like all of us to think about, maybe pause for a second and think where is the, what is the coordinate x, y value for this green one? How far do we have to go back in x and how far do we have to go in y? Okay, if you understood this, in x we have to go back minus width by 2, right? We are going in the negative x direction, minus width by 2 and positive height by 2. Minus width by 2, positive height by 2. If you understand this much, you have understood. Translate. Now, this turns out to be really, really powerful because we don't have to do this only for uh, width by 2, height by 2. You can take any xy point in your canvas and you can move your uh, origin to there temporarily, right? You can do push matrix, pop matrix. You translate, then you calculate everything, all the coordinates with respect to this new origin. You draw whatever you need to do, and then when you're done, you can pop matrix back. Okay? The next concept we want to look at is rotation. But before we can look into actual rotation, a quick reminder on what radians are. You may or may not have learned this in school, but here is enough of a refresher to get us going, okay? Radians and degrees are just two different uh, units, if you will, for measuring angles, okay? So as it shows here, we use the notation, the symbol pi, to show 180 degrees or half the circumference of a circle, okay? If pi is 180, then pi by 2 has to be 90 and pi by 4 is 45 degrees, which is what this shows. Again, if pi is 180, pi by 3 is 60 degrees. So you can see this yellow colored pizza pi, the slice is 60 degrees. And half of this still is pi by 6, which is 30 degrees. Okay. So now you can see that there is a one-to-one -one mapping, a simple conversion to go from angles to radians and radians to angles. Okay. This is good to know. If you don't want to remember all this, there is always a command in processing to convert. We can use that. But a few basic ones, it's good to remember. Okay. So again, you can write the letter capital PI. It's a constant in Python mode or actually in all of processing. A constant PI is 180 degrees. So you can say, pi, when you say pi divided by 2 or pi divided by 2.0, it's 90 degrees. 2 pi, written this way, capital TWO underscore PI is 360 degrees or the full circle. Okay, so if you wanted to mention, if you wanted to invoke 60 degrees, you will say pi divided by 3. And 30 degrees again is pi divided by 6, as we saw. So if you wanted to do sine of 30 degrees, right, normally you would have to do sine of radians of 30, because by default, processing uses radians. So first, if you put it in degrees, you would convert it to radians and then calculate the sine. But it's better and easier if you can remember that if you just say sine of pi by 6, that's already in radians, so uh, processing will do the right thing and it will calculate what you want. Okay. Armed with this, now let's take a look at how we would use a very, very powerful concept for all of your uh, art, generative art called rotate. Okay. Again, just as we saw with transform and rotate, we're going to do use one trick and let's see what that is. The normal way that we would do rotate is that let's say that we draw an arrow or an arc, uh, a line here, okay, and I wanted to rotate it 
by 30 degrees then I will calculate a 30 degree line would be here so I will calculate what my new x value would be what my new y value would be and then I will draw a line from 0 0 to that new value and it and then I'll render it for 60 degrees similarly I'll calculate from 0 0 to this new r sine 60 r cos 60 in uh, or pi by 3 I will do all that and then I could draw it and again I will do similar thing for cos pi by 2 and sine pi by 2 to draw this okay you could sort of continue this 90, 120, 150, 180 and so on. But in processing there is another way and this is the one trick about rotate that you have to understand. Okay. See, we, have, we had our line, right? We know how to draw a simple straight line just parallel to the x-axis. It will go from 0, 0 to 100, comma 0 or whatever the length of our line was. And now if you wanted to draw a 30 degree angle, instead of calculating all this, we got to rotate our underlying axis itself, okay, our coordinate system by 30 degrees, like this. See, when you do this, this is, if you go back, say this is 30 degrees to the original, right? It's just that the whole thing is tilted. So this gets a little used to. So rather than calculating all this, we're going to rotate the graph, but draw the same line. And you could do this more. Instead of 30 degrees, you want to do 30 more. You rotate it one more time, but if you notice clearly, pay attention to this orange line or arrow, it's not moving at all, okay? Only the underlying axis. And then for 90 degrees, you would rotate it one more time. This is the crux, this is the fundamental idea behind how rotate works. So the a line stays the same, and only the underlying axis gets uh, rotated. So how does this work in actual code? Let's take a quick look. We're going to take a circle and we're going to cut it into 12 pieces and then we're going to draw 12 lines, let's say. Just call them number of slices, a variable equals to 12. And then I'm going to say that my step size in angle is 2 pi divided by 12 or 30 degrees, right? 360 divided by 12 is 30, but I'm just specifying it here so that if I change this to 10 or 8, it will the code will work. That's why we use variables instead of hard coding anything. So I said number of uh, slices is 12 and then my step size is 2 pi divided by num slices. Now see how we use that. This is just basically I'm drawing a big canvas and then I'm going to translate to the, my center to the center of the canvas, right? Width by 2, height by 2, so that my whatever my circle that I draw will be in the center of the canvas. This is where all the magic happens. So pay attention, just two lines, actually one line. So for i in range, num slices. So num, i can go from 0 to 11, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9, 10, 11. So it will take 12 values. And for each value of i, I'm saying, hey, you know what? Rotate by step. So rotate by 30 degrees. Rotate by 2 pi divided by 12. So each time this uh, the, the processing, the execution comes here, it will rotate further. And after rotating, it's going to draw one line. So think about what is going on. Okay, This loop will be executed 12 times. So yeah, 12 times I'm going to rotate my axis and I'm going to draw the same line. Pay attention to where the line is. The line goes from 0, 0 to 200 comma 0. So it's always, it looks like I'm drawing the same line over and over again on the parallel to the x-axis. But since the coordinate axis is keeps getting turned, this actually will produce an image which will look like this. Right? That's the power of uh, rotate. Of course, you don't have to rotate only a line. You can draw very complex objects. You can rotate it and keep drawing it over and over again and you can get the same uh, design uh, which are sort of in a rotated frame. All right? So this is the power of rotate. Next, let's look at our last concept in this uh, video, scale. Scale is fairly easy to understand, right? We intuitively know what it's going to do. Scaling a number is either going to increase or decrease the size of our shape, right? It's going to contract, contract it or expand it by contracting and expanding the vertices. So for example, uh, this is just an illustrative one. I had first, let's say, drawn a square, and then if I say scale 0 0.5, it's going to sort of squish it to half its original size, half in the x direction and half in the y direction. I'm just showing you this way. Or if I had already drawn a small square and I said, hey, scale 2.0, and then I draw the same square, it will now be double of its. So the area will be four times, but the size of each uh, dimension will be doubled. That's what scale does. In more detail, scale is simply a way to stretch or contract uh, what you get drawn. Okay, so first I'm going to say scale 0.5 and then everything, anything that you draw after this would be half its original size. You could also say scale 2 as we saw, double it. But 
this is pay attention here you can do scale of x comma y where i'm saying scale 0.5 comma 1 so my x axis i want it to contract half compress it to half but leave the y axis untouched right so in this way you are able to squish the stretch the shape in different ways and of course you can also do uh, 1.5 1.5 in which case we're going to expand both by 50 degrees not quite doubling it but 150 so 15 10 pixels will become 15 pixels 100 pixels will become 150 pixels and so on that's the power of scale very useful concept okay here is uh, oh, that's really all i wanted to co co cover uh, but since you have kind of hung around for uh, this much time i like to give one bonus so in this case uh, my bonus is what would happen if we used scale of a negative number that may not be very intuitive but i'll show that through one example it's very simple. This is it. This is the entire code. Most of the lines are repeated also. I'm setting up a canvas. My pen size, my stroke width is 3. And I'm going to go to the center of the canvas. This is where I'm drawing a triangle. I'm drawing from one line, second line, third line. From A to B, B to C, C back to A. So I'm just going to draw a triangle. Then, this is the important part. I'm scaling with minus 1 only in the x direction uh, no only in the y direction x is exactly the same i'm saying draw the same thing but for y wherever there was y i want to do negative y so as you may have sort of imagined or understood by now intuited this is a, a reflection so it's going to reflect so this is actually the original triangle that i drew here okay 50 50 to 200 comma 50 to here and then back to 50 50. so it, it, it draws this and then you see when i draw these three lines it's uh, reflected back okay so this is a very cheap and powerful way of getting a reflection going in your video right so we have covered a lot of things in this video we looked at five concepts we looked at uh, push matrix and pop matrix then we looked at uh, translate right then we understood how radians and angles work which was our fourth concept for rotate and finally we are using scale so five very very useful transformations we have studied or looked at in this uh, video you are now at a point where you can actually um, start using all of this in your art. I'm also creating a whole playlist on actual examples, right? Small examples. I, when I look at YouTube, I see either people showing very simple things, how to draw a rectangle, or they're drawing this very complicated art. And they're sort of showing off their skills, which they should because they're really, really good. But I want to do something in between. How to apply these concepts? So I'm calling that series Practical generative art so do look for uh, those videos i hope this was useful thank you uh, for your time and don't stop now continue on to five or look at that other playlist okay thanks